Looks like you've got something following you. What are those things? Polyhedra. Poly what? Polyhedra. They're regular sided geometric shapes. If you just take a quick look at them, you might notice that they look like stars. I've even featured a few of them in some of my works. Anyway, who are you? Are you from around here? My name is Jackson Pollock. I was born in Cody, Wyoming in 1912, and I used to live in Chico, Arizona, but I moved to Long Island in New York to my studio. You're an artist too, so who are you? Yes, as a matter of fact, I am. My name's M.C. Escher. You might have heard of me. Oh, yeah. Well, what does the M.C. stand for? Mortis Cornelia, I'm afraid. Ah, I see why you chose these initials. Where would a name like that even be acceptable? I'm from the Netherlands, born in the late 19th century, 1989. Or 1889. Of course, I had my best years of artwork in the 1920s. My wife and family really kept me going through it all. How's life for you outside of the art business? With all the stress to make new wonders of art, I went to drinking and was an alcoholic for years until I ended my life in 1965 in an epic car crash. Hmm, that's no good. What about your art, though? What kind of work did you produce? Um, I was regarded as a mostly reclusive artist who used liquid paint and paint pouring as one of my several techniques in, on my canvases of the early 1940s and created many famous paintings which were during my drip period. Really? So how did you go about it then? I would use synthetic resin-based paints called alkalid enamels, which are household paints, to drip paint onto my canvases. I let gravity and my emotions take over from then, and many reporters describe my painting process as a majestic dance. What would you call that style? Um, my art fit into the abstract expressionist movement period, where I experimented with the drip style and pouring methods, and where I made most of my famous paintings. Interesting. Not exactly to my personal taste, but I can respect that. So, what would you call your style of work? Well, I've been called a realist, a decorative artist, and even a mathematician. But I prefer the term graphic artist. Most of what I work with are lithographs and wood engravings, making it easier for me to replicate some of my most intricate figures. What could need so much precision? Tessellations, actually. Those are designs that interlock with one another and repeat over the entirety of a surface. Like those that you can see on my clothes here. I could simply spend days on experimenting with tessellated shapes. The visual effects that they can create are spectacular. Myself, I laid canvases on the ground so I'd be able to paint from all four directions and was even able to walk on them and use liquid paints along with thick brushes, sticks, and even based in syringes as applicators. All four sides? Well, there's some alternate perspective of a shape there. With all this talk of geometry, you must be rather interested in math. Actually, that's where I've drawn a large majority of my inspiration from. Geometry, physics, calculus, they all give me brilliant ideas to work with. Not just with what makes sense, but more so with what defies the logic of space. What about you? What influenced your artwork? I was heavily influenced by Indian sand painting, Mexican muralists, and also surrealist automa automatism. From your work, it looks like you take quite an interest in architecture, too. Well, a lot of that really stems from my father's influence. He wanted me to be an architect, but I just couldn't get the grades. Of course, drawing structures certainly was something that I was always good at. But I prefer working with concepts and figures that are physically impossible in reality. Stairs going to nowhere, convex space transforming into concave, leaping connections between interior and exterior building elements. You'd never see architecture like this walking down the street. But its illogical nature is what really makes it so enticing. 
I've heard that art just doesn't mix with math and science. I'm guessing that you would disagree. Absolutely. That's an absurd notion. Visual art is all about how space is occupied, how one can divide up and fill a surface, how we rely so much on the concept of perception that it would be foolish to disregard how much math and science tie into what we see and how we represent it. Art certainly goes hand in hand with geometry. Would you say that you've had any kind of influence on how people perceive art? I should hope so. Judging by the admiration they seem to have for me, I would say that I've had a profound influence on a lot of logical thinkers, such as engineers and physicists. Mathematicians really opened the door for what I've based my work on, but I don't think they had seen the potential beauty that lied on the other side of it. At least not before I had made a point to show them. I like to think that I've taken a big step in bridging the perceived gap between art and analytical logic. And how have you impacted art as we see it today? My rhythmic use of pain and my fierce independence were more lasting influences, and I'm considered a great modern artist, which many people study and imitate. Oh, and uh, just one last question. Are you still alive? No, I died in 1972. Oh. Well, between you and I, that makes this conversation just a bit more awkward. Mm, perhaps so. Well, take care. Yep. Bye.